It's time for another exciting edition of You Made Me Watch, and by you, I mean three of you. At least I'm assuming that everybody who uh, donated to ask me to watch something uh, actually is watching this now. It would be kind of odd if they weren't. Uh, but anyway, I want to thank everybody, as always, uh, for doing this, and everybody who is pledging on Patreon, uh, regardless of whether or not you're requesting things. Thanks a lot for that as well. I'm going to review three movies today, and I'm going to review them as lickety-split as possible, uh, because we've been at the Omnibus for a while, and uh, Eric and I are starting to get a little bit tired. Uh, so we're, I'm going to run through these. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is a... Um, a documentary called Call Me Lucky. It's about the um, comedian Barry Crimmins. Are you familiar with Barry Crimmins? I've never heard of him before this. You, you told me some things after you watched the documentary. I was like, that sounds like something I should have heard of. Same here, yeah, and, and it's really interesting. Uh, so this request comes, once again, from Jeffrey Patron, uh, and I'm getting quite the education from Jeffrey. Uh, first about a lot of music things, and now suddenly about the world of comedy. Um, this is one of the most influential comedians that I've never heard of, and uh, that's partly because, or mostly, I guess, because uh, he's a guy who lives kind of like a hermit now, and he still does clubs. Uh, but he's not in the public eye, and he doesn't like the world of entertainment, and he has, uh, saying that he has a lot of issues with uh, America right now and, and the culture right now, going all the way back, uh, in, in general, would be an understatement. Um, he is as much of an activist, or at least, well, I guess he still is, um, as he is well, he a just comedian. Passed away. Did he really? Yeah, that's why he sent it to you. Wasn't that the reason he sent you? Was I, he just passed away? I had forgotten about it. If he said that, I'd forgotten about yeah. that. In, in the documentary, he's, he's, he's still around. And, yeah. and actually, um, I kind of... I didn't look him up ahead of time. Uh, for whatever reason, I kind of expected that it would that it was like a post-mortem movie, but then, like, ten minutes in, suddenly he's being interviewed, and I'm like, oh, he's still around, but he but he just passed away. Okay. Um, but up until he passed, he was still... Um, at least in, by when this documentary was made. Um, he was... I had forgotten that Jeffrey told us about that. Um... He was, and you'll have to bear with me because it's been like three weeks since I watched this. Uh, but I watched this quick, and then we had to wait an extra week to make the omnibus. Uh, but anyway, so um, but he was he was still uh, playing clubs, and I guess that's how he was surviving. That's how he was making enough money to live. Because uh, a lot of people in the documentary was kind of were kind of curious about how he was even like 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 making it, and uh, he was so out of the the public limelight for the longest time. But in the uh, in the eighties. Uh, he was a big part of the big, uh, I guess, I guess 70s, 80s. He was a big part of the comedy movement in the first place, and he ran one of the big comedy clubs that uh, that that got a lot of major talent that we um, that, that we think of now uh, started. And it's uh, and and, it, and it's crazy to think of this guy as a businessman, considering um, how and I, and, I, and I guess he wasn't, but like, it, but he ran this this place, and I forget if it was the comedy store or a different or a different place. I forget which one it was. I mean, the comedy store is a big one. Yeah, but I mean, it was one of the big ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, so um, there's there's a lot of people you've heard of that are interviewed in the movie that talk about him, uh, it, it, like he he's really important and a big deal, like Patton Oswalt and some and, and some people like that. And uh, his style is really interesting. Thing because he says a lot of things that on paper are funny, but n uh, not a lot that would actually make me laugh out loud. Mm -hmm. uh, he is he is a little bit like Carlin uh, in that he is really super political and says whatever's on his mind, and he does not care what people think of him. But he runs off the rails in a way Carlin didn't, like way harder. Then and I haven't watched a lot of Carlin, but way harder than than I had seen with Carlin. And there are also some things politically that he and Carlin disagreed with. And they never bring up George Carlin, but I, I found myself true. thinking of again. Yeah, I kind of expect them to. That doesn't not happen. A documentary about Carlin yet? Is there not? No, not that, as far that, as I'm aware. There's one about Bill Hicks, me. and it's wonderful. And it yeah. was about 15 years after he passed, I'm surprised we haven't done one about Carlin. Yeah, I think Jeffrey is a big Bill Hicks fan too. He had a T-shirt. Um, of, of him when he was here. Oh, awesome! Uh, I believe that was the T-shirt. But but anyway, so um, but I was I found myself comparing him to Carlin partly because 
Uh, one of the big things uh, he preached was how important it was to vote, and Carlin was anti-voting. He's anti-voting. Uh, one, so, of the, one of my favorite bits by him. Yeah, me too. So, it's not so my fault. I didn't vote. Yeah. So I, so I thought that was what, it, that's not just part of a bit. He really believed that. Yeah. He, he really, he really, he didn't want to be part of that system at all because he thought it was so broken. Um, and but I mean, Crimmins has that to some degree. Um, he would just sometimes completely run away with himself, and he had this. Um, th this massive, um, like, internal conflict of not wanting to be a negative person, but not being able to help being so angry about how corrupt he thought the government and big business was. And that sounds very relatable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, you, you, you would you would find him really interesting, and he's, this thing is right up your alley, you should have, and it was uh, directed by Bobcat Goldwaite, and oh, I love Bobcat Goldwaite. really strange that you didn't actually end up watching this with me, but you, but you, but you, but you, you should probably watch I, this. I, I will try and sit down and watch this. Yeah, uh, but I, as as a documentary, um, I think it it paints a uh, really layered picture of this guy, and uh, it gives you kind of foibles, foibles and all. And uh, it doesn't, you know, demonize the guy, but it doesn't christen him either. And uh, you get to see kind of all sides of the man. And uh, I thought it was fascinating. Um, it, it's it, it's funny because. Like, like, I think he was a really interesting person before, before just from what we saw of him. I think he was a great comedian, but I got what people saw in him. I got the, I got the appeal. But it's weird because he is one of these guys that was a comedian and talked about uh, things that comedians did poorly, like... He, he has this bit where he's just going off about uh, people, about about comedians, uh, not uh, about stand-up comics, like not writing a set, not writing bits, and just jumping off of like uh, what whatever the fad is and whatever's popular, and saying things that just don't even make sense, just because that, that, that where you're pretending like it's relatable real-life humor, but it doesn't actually make any sense. And uh, and and he and he just kept saying like just write a bit, but then a lot of his comedy was just he would have some things that he wrote, and then he'd get really angry about something, and then he'd just go off and lose it. And I'm like, well, like 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 write a bit, but then he had this really fascinating fusion of pre-written material and using it as a. a uh, using that as kind of a pulpit and uh, it worked for some people and didn't work for other people. Well, I mean, that's that's how I've always viewed view, uh, viewed Carlin and Bill Hicks where it's that, um, that uh, the but court jester thing. Carlin where, where, was more where you, eloquent about it. But, 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 but I mean, well, but, I mean, well, I mean it's it was comedy to bring the bad news kind of a thing. Yeah, sure. Well, and he did that too, but sometimes he would just get, he would just lose himself in it and it, it, he would get like inarticulate. Interesting. And he would just start screaming at people. And that was part of his act, you know? Um, I, I mean, I mean, you would never see him do the same set, set, same set twice. That's true. If, if, if it was the same that's jumping true. off you points, go, you would never see him no, do the You could see him three twice. hours in a row. Yeah. And, and, and it went, yeah, no, that's true. You, you just keep coming back. It's real novelty. Um, a lot of where he came from was a really dark childhood and the the movie goes into into that a lot and uh, he was um, molested as a child and they go into all of that and uh, it's it's really super sad there's a part where like I was surprised considering how private he is some of the things he was willing to do on camera he goes back to the house where that happened to him oh wow in the movie and that was a really powerful thing I imagine Bobby Goldthwait's his friend yeah but I wonder whose idea that was. Yeah. Um, but I. Uh, but they do that, and it's really powerful. And um, he. Uh, one of the more interesting things, because like I said, like I said, he, he was a, he was a major activist, and uh, one of the most interesting things in the movie is about uh, AOL in the late '90s, early 2000s, and how he was he would go into chat rooms and figured out that there was this huge. 
uh, like child pornography trafficking thing happening inside of AOL chat rooms that no one was paying attention to, and that uh, that AOL was kind of sweeping under the rug, and that the government didn't know about, and he brought it to the government's attention, and uh, a lot of the senators just treated it like, uh, well, I don't know anything about the internet, so who cares, and uh, he kind of single-handedly b- uh, forced AOL to, uh, to, to you know, be brought to task about it. And uh, that whole thing was fascinating. Wow. Yeah. So uh, I, I highly recommend that documentary. Um, it's, it's one of those things that's, you know, not for the faint of heart, and it's, um, like, it, you know, you know, it's not totally lacking in optimism, but it's uh, it, it's got its downer what's moments, it, certainly. What's it called? Uh, it's called Call Me Lucky. Okay. Uh, so check that out. And Jeffrey, thanks for uh, having me watch that. And then other things people made me watch. Uh, David Crabtree made me watch Real Steel, which I kind I of... I saw in theaters. Yeah, and I meant to watch that back when it came out and never got around to it because I like Hugh Jackman and uh, that was Rock'em Sock'em Robots the movie. And uh, I thought that, that... At first I thought it looked really dumb and then people told me it was cool and I was like, I should have gone to that. I cannot believe how long ago that came out. That's 2011. That movie's seven years old. I cannot get my mind around that. Um, it's it's really good. Yeah, it's uh, like Rocky, but in a way that works. It's like it's like a bunch of sports movies. It doesn't become Rocky until the end. Yes. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. Because when I started watching it, I I started going, okay, whatever you do, Cap. When you talk about the, this movie, don't compare it to Rocky, because not all boxing movies boxing movies are Rocky. And then at the end. It's a draw. It's a split decision, and I went okay. So it's Rocky now. Um, well, it's more of a father son story. Rocky doesn't have that. It's it's a it's a father son. Yeah, Rocky doesn't have that until Rocky Balboa. Um, but no, Rocky it's a, Five. It's also a, oh, that's true. Let's that not is, forget about no, Rocky no, Five. No, not, no, let's do forget <laughs> about the, the the street fight at the end. He brings up um, <laughs> But um, yeah, it's uh. No, it, it's it, it is a bunch of different sports movies. Um, I mean, all sports movies come from the same cloth. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Seems like everybody saw Mighty Ducks, and they're just like, yeah, this is how we make movies for adults too. Yeah, so I like how the science fiction element is, is handled in that because it's 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 subtle enough. Um, it's it's present day, but it's not. It's like just a little bit in the future. It's a five minutes in the future, though. Um, yeah, yeah, and I I think I think that's cool. Um, it. Like they could have made it too futuristic, and it would have been harder to relate to. And given that uh, it, there, there's kind of a good old boy Southern quality to it, sort of Southern quality. I mean, nobody has Southern accents. I feel like they probably should. Uh, I, I, I feel like more of this should take place like in Texas or something. But whatever. Um, if I remember correctly, when when there's there's like the the endorsement people. Oh, I don't that, know where we are at the beginning versus later. But what were you gonna say? Uh, if I remember correctly, they have like the. The uh, the the ads and stuff around the ring. Yeah, and I believe one of them is for the Xbox Seven Twenty. Oh, that's funny. Because I because th- I'm almost positive I remember seeing that because that's what everyone thought it was gonna gonna be. because yeah. it's it's the three sixty times two. And that's awesome. I'm I pretty go sure. I'm that. pretty sure that's there. But um, yeah, and and I I watched this one on a smaller screen, so I didn't notice that. But um, but there is. A, there's a lot of subtle hints that the robot might be sentient. And I really like that we don't go too far with that, and that it, it's kind of ambiguous and it's left up to the audience a little bit. Uh, and I kind of thought that the whole thing was going to turn into that question. It's one of the reasons I'm glad it didn't get a sequel. Because it would have it would have had to give that an answer. Yeah, and I kind of I don't want it to. It, it seems like the perfect movie to not franchise. Uh, and also at this point, like, okay, that kid's at 18 or 19, and I, I, do you bring Hugh Jackman back, or do you just let that guy have his whole have his own movie? And I don't know if anybody would want to see that without Hugh Jackman. Um, so people, so Hugh Jackman is really cool because he's versatile, and there's a lot of different roles he can play. But let's not pretend like Hugh Jackman doesn't sometimes get get sometimes get typecast, right? Uh, this is that uh, Hugh Jackman archetype where he's uh, in, in, an angry guy who's not sure where he's going, doesn't really like kids, is stuck with a kid, and yells at them in a truck. Okay? That is the Hugh Jackman stereotype. He's yelling at children that he's responsible for. The archetype. In a truck! Specifically! Um, I, I really like... Uh, 
all the stuff about the 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 kind of the kind of uh, nature nurture thing with this kid who is very much his son and who thinks he's smarter than him, but then makes all the same mistakes, and they really have to put their heads together to uh, figure out how to both come out of their own ruts. Um, I was surprised that I bought uh, Hugh Jackman going from a Char Charlie, and it's weird that Wolverine is playing a character named Charles now. I have a really tough time with that. Um, but it, it, it's, uh, it's really impressive that it gets from... Uh, he basically... Um, sells his own kid to the, the the family members that really want him uh, and and does whatever he needs to for his own gain and doesn't care about anyone all the way to uh, he is literally fighting for this kid. And uh, I bought it, hook, hook, line, and sinker, and kind of teared up at the end and was really surprised by that with this material. So it's interesting because do you know what the ending... So this is based on Richard Matheson's story Richard Matheson's story, yeah, do which you know I've never read. what the ending to that story is? No, I don't. So there is no kid. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I figured. There is no kid because uh, Richard Matheson's story. And uh, basically what happens is... His robot that he's sure is a surefire win for this fight. He's going to win a lot, lots of money. Yeah. Breaks. And he has to put the robot on, like, armor. And he has to box. And he almost dies, but he wins. Or maybe, maybe he loses, but he gets money. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we want your robot to fight again next week. And he can't say no because he's still addicted, addicted to gambling. So he has to... He's, he's going it, to... It, it's like, a, it, like an old Henry where it's like, oh... I have to come back next week and do this again. So it's a cautionary and, tale story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wow. A, which is uh, obviously why it got turned into a, a Twilight Zone episode. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot that that was one of those that was a Twilight Zone. Yep. Um, this is a much more optimistic ending. Yeah, and I don't mind that. I mean, like, they, they took... They, they no, made it, it a different story. Yeah. Uh, it, it's based on that story, but it is a different thing. And, it, no, it absolutely works. Uh, it was it was pretty... Um, it was pretty moving. And there's some there's some really heart wrenching stuff in it. I remember uh, liking it and seeing it a lot, of being like, "Oh yeah, I forgot this movie came out. I should rewatch this." And then I've never done that. Yeah, I'll definitely watch it again. Um, and I was also surprised just that that it, the movie was able to make me buy that uh, that 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 sparring robot was able to go as far as it does. Uh, and you know, a lot of that is because it is like a literal extension of uh, these two guys that discover what they really want together and figure out how to make that happen. Because um, it's it's one of those things where it's about protagonists who think they know what they want, but here's what they really want, uh, and they ultimately you know go after it and, and, and are able to kind of achieve it. And I liked it. Um, like Hugh Jackman's character ultimately ends up being really sympathetic, but not like. Irritatingly so, where he ends up, uh, like like I, m I might have expected, like halfway through he would learn a big lesson and he would turn into like a completely different person. Uh, he makes giant changes with without me thinking that he's like like a light switch, a totally different character because he is. He's fallen so far because uh, he's this you know washed out boxer that can't do that anymore, and it's really it's really sad when it's like even your second career didn't work, mm -hmm. you know? Because I really like this idea of uh, he was a boxer, and because I thought the idea initially was just he's he knows stuff about robots. No, he was a boxer uh, who couldn't fight anymore, and then took that to the robot thing, and then he screwed that up. And now he's just doing everything he can to hang on to that. And he's making all these horrible mistakes, and and he can't and he can't keep it. And I, uh, the it's on the nose. But the bit at the end where he's actually literally fighting the fight himself uh, without actually getting the robot suit on, like you're like, like you're talking about. I think that whole thing totally works. Well, and, and, and it's a contrivance that works completely. That he has to shadow box. Mm -hmm. He has to actually fight the fight. Like that totally works. I also remember really liking the robot designs and thinking this film was really toyetic and there was not enough merchandise for it. Yeah, it's weird that we didn't put out more. There was some. Because they're really cool robots. And I think it's an okay family film. I my I remember my big takeaway when I first saw it was like, this is a great movie to watch with your son. Yeah. Which I probably will. I'm like, I, I wish I'd shown it to Jason. I'll probably buy this movie. Um, but yeah, so David, thanks a lot for uh, suggesting that. I liked it a lot. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is uh, a movie that was suggested by John Early uh, from 1940 called His Girl Friday, a movie that everybody's heard of and nobody I know has probably ever actually sat down and watched. In every review for everything that has 
a like secretary girl that they're in love with. Like I, I remember all of the Iron Man reviews referred to Pepper Potts as his girl Friday. Yeah, and that's weird because it's kind of her movie. Um, so this is based on uh, a play called The Front Page, and in that play, apparently, she's not a woman, and I don't know how that plays, and I, I kind of like to read that script, because I feel like it would have to be a very different story, because it's, it's, uh, it's supposed to be this kind of heightened satire, or maybe it's pretending like it's a heightened satire, but the joke is that uh, the newspaper business is really this ruthless, and people in it are uh, really as uh, messed up and, uh, and manipulative and, and uh, willing to do, to do anything. Um, th th this is a movie that has a happy ending, but doesn't have a happy ending, and uh, left me with kind of a sunk feeling, and I was impressed with that in 1940, uh, especially with like this really jovial music right at the end. Uh, but the um but the idea is there's this um there's this woman who is a Lois Lane type who is uh and and this actress would have been great for Lois Lane um who is really good as a reporter but doesn't want to be re a reporter anymore at least she doesn't think she is that's that that's her big internal conflict and uh she's trying to get married um, to this uh, really nice above board guy who uh, doesn't really have any street smarts and is really easily manipulative or manipulated, and uh, her her boss uh, she's she's doing one last story and about to leave, and her boss was her husband who she divorced because he's a horrible human being and manipulates everything around him, and throughout the whole movie he's constantly manipulating everything, and uh, he is constantly finding ways to get she he just he just learns that she has a fiance and that she's getting married tomorrow and he pretend he takes them out to dinner and he pretends like uh he's um like he's okay with it but he keeps finding ways to get the guy thrown in jail just throughout the whole movie it's like this running thing where like three or four times he gets thrown in jail and uh He's he's uh, he's just he's really emotional and manipulative, and uh, it's it's uh, it's it's really messed up the things that, that that he does to her. But it's that really heightened speech, uh, kind of kind of play where uh, and I mean you know, there's a there's a ton of dialogue and there's a ton of um, of uh, kind of kind of tete a tete in a conversation and uh, layered dialogue and a lot of uh, just really good. Um, kind of repartee, and uh, so it's a really fun watch, even as you're like, these people are scumbags, uh, you know, because there's so much fun wordplay and stuff, and uh, it's a thing I love to see on stage, and uh, I, I have that sometimes in movies like this, where I'm like, it's a good movie, but this is meant to be on stage. We should that a little bit with uh, uh, The Odd Couple. The Odd Couple, yeah, and I, I had a, a lot of flashbacks to, to odd couple uh, there is a so there's this this major um, subplot uh, that converges converges with the main story where there's this guy who's uh, about to hang which is weird because I, I'm having a hard time telling if this is supposed to be set in the present day of the time or if it's sort of like an alternate history or something because I did a little bit of research and I don't think there, there were only two states left that were still hanging people at this period, and I don't think it was it's the one that we're in, but I might be wrong about that. But I that. feel like that's a thing that stuck around in fiction longer than... Like, yeah. It's like the electric chair, where like, we stopped that long before we stopped saying we were doing that in fiction. Yeah, and there's this there's this uh, inner title at the beginning that that uh, is really tongue-in-cheek about the whole thing, where it's like... Uh, it's like this is set in a time where uh, the new the newspaper game was really cutthroat, and uh, there, there was all this manipulation that went on, and it bears no resemblance whatsoever to what the uh, newspaper game is like today. And then it looks like it's just set in that day. It's really funny. That's really funny. Um, I think this is a brilliant film. I I don't want to give away the ending for people that haven't seen it. I think folks should sit down and watch this and. Um, I uh, I should I should talk more about it, but I want I want people to see it. Uh, it's it's one of those I uh, uh, plays in movies where there's a whole lot of fun, like um, not mistaken identity, but people 
uh, like 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 hiding in 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 plain sight and uh, and and people like going in and out of rooms where you know you know you, you imagine the play script where uh, it's like this person enters, this person leaves, and we do we, we we do a lot of fun stuff with like we haven't seen this person in a while. What happened? And they come back in, they got beaten up, and they're all messed up. We find out why that happened. And um, but but uh, but so there's this guy who uh, like I was saying earlier, who is supposed to hang because he murdered someone, and there's a big question as to uh, whether or not it was it, it, it was something he could have helped, and he clearly didn't do it on purpose. There's this whole thing about this is interesting. There's this whole thing about. Uh, items meant being meant to be used, and if you use a thing for what it's for, then is it is it your fault or is it the fault of having the thing in the first place? And that's obviously um, a big metaphor for uh, ends justifies the means and using people as a uh, means to the end, which uh, in which people in the newspaper game feel the need. Uh, to do a lot so that they can get their story, and they'll do anything you know to get their story. And uh, so th there's this. This was a thing I never really thought of before, and I thought it was kind of profound. It's like um, I was holding a gun, and it was this really tense situation, and I couldn't help but use it because I had it, and that's what it's for. And um, I don't know. I thought that was really interesting. Um, but like I said, the the uh, the movie ends. I uh, totally differently from what I was expecting and like everybody gets what they think they want but nobody's happy and like she thinks that she doesn't want to uh, be a, a, a newspaper person anymore and uh, and, and like everybody treats her um, in, in the uh, newspaper world like she's one of them, like she, like she's just a man. Like it's almost like they don't even notice her gender. Like Lois Lane. Yeah, um, and they call her a newspaper man. Like they, like they, they don't even, they don't even mess around with with the titles. And um, she thinks she just wants to be a homemaker because that's that's normal. And I think the real reason uh, that she wants to do that is because I uh, she's she's sick of the moral ambiguity. And there's a point toward the end where it looks like her ex-husband has uh, put her in a position where she's been forced to get someone killed. And uh, she gets lucky that that person didn't actually die, but she ends up um, getting to where she, she, she could leave. And, uh, and and get on the train and go with her um, with her fiance and then uh, her ex-husband and this is the big ambiguity of the ending uh, and you it, said you weren't gonna I, spoil. no I don't want to give too much away but um, but the, I, I guess the way but this is so interesting I have to tell you about okay. it. the the, the um, is, is just, as I'm reliving this in my brain I'm like nah I gotta, I gotta say something about this um, basically, there is this spark of compassion and altruism in the uh, main newspaper guy, in Cary Grant's character, uh, her ex-husband, and I'm not sure if, you know, on a first viewing, if he's actually genuine or not, but what it looks like is that he is, and then he set things up um, earlier that he forgot about, that manipulates things to what he wanted in the first place, and he at the at the end doesn't take the opportunity for change and ends up just going with it, but was trying to do the right thing, and it's really fascinating. Um, so yes, it's 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 an absolutely excellent movie, and everybody should watch it. Um, next time, John Early uh, also um, requested the original Scarface, which I've never seen, and uh, one or the both of us will talk about that. So anyway, that concludes. We've also uh, never seen. The remake of Scarface? No, so it will be weird. <laughs> I've never watched any of Scarface, so yeah, I know. Um, look, I, I just take the requests as they come, <laughs> and I talk about them the best I can. Uh, I'm not always going to be the, on my game with these, because they're not about <laughs> things that I know anything about. But I'm getting an education. And uh, folks, I really appreciate uh, your your requests. Uh, we have a few more that I've not gotten to yet. I've got a uh, I've started um, a Doctor Who audio drama that I wasn't able to finish and wouldn't have had time to talk about anyway. And uh, there is a couple of other movies on here that we're going to have to get to. So anyway, uh, we will do some of that next time. And uh, if you would like to uh, make a request, just go to patreoncom slash geekvolution and uh, you can pledge at the twenty dollar tier for just one month or multiple months, depending on how long you'd like to do it. And uh, once again, we sure appreciate it.